Here's Johnny. Put my head up, up, up. I got you stuck, stuck, stuck. You had enough, enough, enough. And hey, bubble gum. Hey, bubble gum. Peace, this is your boy Johnny Fastlane here. I'm with my girl Luna Gray. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank yeah. you for pulling up on me. Yeah, no problem. Um, you've been outside, man. I've been seeing you work like crazy, you know? Um, Y'all seen Luna Gray at the Traffic Jam Festival twice. She was at Flock and Loud. She's been performing all up and down New York City all damn summer. Yeah. Um, but you got a new single out, right? I do have a new single out, actually. Gumball, it's right? Called, it's called Gumball. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit of a different vibe than my last, than, than all of my music. It's a little bit more of a pop vibe. Mm -hmm. But you know, low key, I am like a little pop star too. You know, I, I came in through hip hop, so everything's been pretty much hip hop. But this still has a little funk to it, you know? It is called Gumball, like I said, so. I got a crazy video to that as well on YouTube. Check it out, Gumball by Luna Gray. Now the video is pretty dope, man. Um, the visuals are crazy. Like, who directed that? Um, actually, me and my manager produced and directed the whole thing. Really? Yeah. So there was a videographer, but it was really our vision. You okay. Know? So yeah, I'm 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 thankful for that video because, well, that was during the pandemic. You know what I mean? So that was kind of hard to make happen because oh, there was wow. okay. there was models in it. There was probably like you know, ten people on set that day. So it was to have that many people get it done in the middle of it, that was in Atlanta. So oh, it was I, in so Atlanta? That was in Atlanta. So I flew out there, flew my manager out there. All the models came through. Everyone was on time. We made it happen. That was a one-day shoot, too. <laughs> wow. Like, that, that video is pretty intricate for one day. So, yeah, we made it happen. Yo, break down the meaning of gumball to me. Because I saw, like, there was a video of you, like, breaking it down yeah. and, like, the meaning of it all, yeah. right? Let yeah. the people know what it means. Yeah, you know. the metaphors behind it. Well, it's funny because it kind of sounds like it could be like a diss song. Right. And <laughs> it, it was in one regard, because that was kind of like to my exes, I don't want you type of vibe. Mm -hmm. That's one of the lines in the song. But really, it was more coming from a more heartfelt place, um, because there, there was someone that I really liked at the time. And so it was more of like my message, message to them saying that like, hey, I don't want that guy. So I'm single, like it was more like supposed to mean that. So okay, okay. it kind of has a dual dual meaning, but I think everything is, um, you know, art can be taken in many different interpretations. So I like to leave it all open. So I'll tell people why I wrote it, but also like it doesn't mean that your interpretation is wrong. It's however it makes you feel, you know. I mean, it's art at the end of it's the art. day. So however someone sees it is how it is, I guess, right? right? How, however you you take the, take it, that's it. Now, a lot of people know the face, a lot of people know the name, um, but they don't know like the story. Mm -hmm. So, where are you from? Uh, I'm actually from Chicago. I'm a Chicago girl. Ah, Chicago. Chicago okay. girl, Aish, I tell them, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a Chicago girl. And, you know, I started coming to New York back in 2017, really. But I would only come for like a short period. And then about a year and a half ago, I like half moved out here, mm. but I kept my, my crib in Chicago, so I was going back and forth between New York and Chicago. Uh. Just, just a couple months ago, like two months ago, three months ago, I moved out here officially, said goodbye to all my friends in Chicago, <laughs> miss y'all, love y'all, and um, now I'm here. So what made you want to move to New York? Was it to pursue your career? Yeah, it was, it was for my career. I was also very deep into cannabis at that point too. Mm -hmm, I built mm -hmm. a dispensary in Chicago. So when I built a dispensary and once that was kind of done, you know, I knew I wanted to go to New York. I had known that for a couple of years, but I was very invested in cannabis. Well, mm -hmm. music, of course, but like cannabis was what was funding everything I was doing. That's why I wasn't signing any label deals because I could fund myself. So, um, you know, because for me, a label is, is really just about the funding. Yeah. You know, like it's it's the money. So and if you could put the money behind yourself. And if you got the money to put behind, you know, and that's what I that's what I did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I came out here to really kind of do cannabis, but things picked up so quick with music that I happily kind of sidestepped that. And I'm still in cannabis. I still do things in cannabis as well. But that's not, you know, that's kind of like a, just a super side thing now. That's a side hustle. Yeah. It's, I mean, it was always a side hustle. That funded everything, but like, <laughs> but you know, I, now it's like, it's kind of just over there now. And I still do make products and merch, and I will continue to make merch. And I'm always going to be a, a cannabis connoisseur. I'm always going to be a pothead, and I'm always <laughs> going to represent cannabis advocacy as well. So, 
So I saw some videos of you speaking about being a pothead, uh, lunch with Luna, and yeah. it's just some real pothead shit where you're just oh. sitting there vibing with the lunatics oh. and you're just eating lunch and shit like that. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> such a pothead show because it's basically just well, lunch with Luna specifically is just me buying food in Chicago. A lot of restaurants would sponsor it and they would give me the food and we'd, I'd eat it. I would just kind of do a funny little video eating the food, breaking it down, you know, letting people know how I like the food. But a lot of the food items were all like munchy food, I realized. Like, I realized, like, I, I was like, I kind of It's ate, all snacks. It's all snacks. I'm like, I kind of ate, like, like a, a 10 year old. Like, I like, you have any dinosaur nuggets? No, not really. But yeah, no, it was definitely some, some pothead stuff right there. You're also into, like, psychedelics, too, right? Yeah, I'm super into psychedelics. Um, yeah, tell me about that, like, shrooms and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've always been experimental with my consciousness because I feel like that is, you know, forgive me if you disagree, but I, I believe that we have a right to explore our own minds and our own consciousness. And unlock your brain. Unlock you know? our brains. I mean, there's, there's doors in our brains that we don't have the keys for, but psychedelics give us access to. And... So psychedelics specifically, I do advocate for, and I do, you know, there's lots of medicinal benefits in a lot of psychedelics. Mm -hmm. I really like to push uh, shrooms because they are the most natural. It's straight plant medicine. And, you know, it's done a lot for me. And I do believe that it also has helped me heal. Long story short, um, there's a lot of medicinal benefits to psychedelic mushrooms. And there's also a lot of studies on it these days that there's a reason it's getting decriminalized across the country. You know, Oakland, Cali, a lot of different places have started to decriminalize it. Yes. Yeah, and that is, like we saw with marijuana, that is the first step towards legalization. And I do believe that that day will come as well, at least medicinally, that day will come. I think it has a very similar trajectory to, to weed. And that's why I got into the cannabis industry, because I knew that was going to happen. I knew things were going to get legalized. Yeah. A lot of us knew that, right? Um, and it's going to happen again with shrooms. So all these are like natural drugs. I don't even want to call it drugs, yeah, but all medicine. of these are natural. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, for you, does like shrooms or psychedelics help you with your creative process? Um, yeah, it does. I wouldn't say that I lean on that too much for my creative process. That comes more just from, you know, absorbing my, my environment and, you know, accounting for my day-to-day -day experiences. But, um, I will say that uh, shrooms definitely made me a better person mm. and it opened my mind in a lot of ways. And when I think of myself pre, you know, psychedelics and post psychedelics, I mean, I'm just, I'm just a better person. I don't want to seem like it, it's just true. I'm more open minded. <laughs> I think I have a lot more understanding of life, society, people, love, you know, just being open in general. And I think that's important in life. I think we all have to be receptive to people around us and everyone's different and we can all learn from each other. And I love shrooms because I actually learn from myself when I take shrooms. Ah. I can, you know, that's what's cool about it. Because usually when we're learning, we're absorbing things. We're learning because we're hearing something from someone. We're watching something on, on, online or reading a book or whatever. That's, that's how we learn. But with shrooms, I can sit in a room by myself and learn from my own thoughts, because I'm looking at the same things that I've already looked at, but differently. So yeah, it, it allows me to look at life differently. So tell me, like, you're more than just a rapper, right? Um, I look at you as like an artist, an yeah. all-around artist. What got you into like entertainment in the first place? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I've always kind of been been in entertainment. You know, I, I was I very young. I was exposed to, you know, the industry mainly through television. My dad um, has roots. I mean, that's what my dad did. My dad was a, a television guy. Um, so I, I grew up on TV, TV sets and in, 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 in my dad's TV station. Oh, dope. And dope. yeah, so he would always get me involved in commercials and acting stuff when I was a kid. So Oh, so you was born to do this then? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, a little bit, you know, because he, he, he was, he had his own television station that covered the political dynamic of um, you know the city and the landscape. So I grew up in this kind of like half entertainment, half political environment with my dad. Mm -hmm. So you know he was like a, he was you know he was kind of famous or whatever. So um, for the city, you know, for where he was at in public broadcasting. So yeah, he'd always get me in like PSAs and different little commercials, like you know like the dare programs when you're in yeah. school, cops, 
And You're then, like one of those little kids yeah, with the shirts exactly. on. Exactly. <laughs> well, and then, and, then and then they put a video in, and it's some kid like, no, I don't want to take candy for you, weird guy with the van. No, like that would be me. I'd be the kid like, no, leave me alone. You run the other way. Like that was the kind of acting I was doing. You know, and I, I did a commercial too, a couple of commercials with like a trained duck and all types of weird stuff. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I guess I was, you know, and my dad was a, um, you know, he was a public figure. So just seeing him be in front of large audiences, mm -hmm. I remember my first show, I remember being so, so nervous. But it felt like, it was like, well, my dad does this, though. And, mm -hmm. you know, it worked out for him. So I, I kind of just, like, jumped into it, you wow. know. Mm -hmm. That's pretty dope. Yeah. I never had any, like, real training, like, with theater, with theater or both, anything, really. I mean, I really just, I'm, I'm just an artist. I, I just let it out and, you know, kind of keep it moving, to be honest. What were you listening to when you were coming up as a kid? Um, really, the Beatles. The Beatles. Well, that kind of explains some of the psychedelic stuff. Yeah. But I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a very, very huge Beatles fan. Um, I liked Michael Jackson. I liked. I mean, I don't know. I liked Avril Lavigne for a while. Okay. That, I guess that's why I got a little. I fuck with her. Punk rock. <laughs> yeah. You know, but um, yeah, and then I, and then I really fell in love with, um, you know, hip hop. Via Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne really brought me into that world really, ah. really deeply. Um, and after that, there was no going back for me, you know. What is it about Lil Wayne that kind of just like grabbed you and made you say, oh, wow? It was with the, the triple entendres, you know. He, he, he doesn't just do double entendres. He does triple entendres. So it was just seeing his wordplay and how creative he was vocally, lyrically. And, you know, I just, I got really into like, Lyricism, when I first got into music, it was all very lyrically driven for me. Now I would say it's a little bit more sound. It's about, it's about the sound, the sonic aspect, a little bit more than the lyrics. Mm -hmm. But I think there's power in both, of course. But, but think about it. You know, I can listen to a song, you know, in a different language and still like the song. Yeah. I don't know what they're saying. And sing along with it. But exactly. It sounds good, so I'm going to jam to it, right? Like, you don't always have to understand what they're saying. The same reason that we can go watch an orchestra with all instruments and we can have a, we can enjoy it because it's it's about the sound, you know. And, and, and vocals are really just another instrument, you know. When you when you're recording a song on Pro Tools or whatever, your vocals are just one of the instruments, you know. You got you got the drums, you got the kicks, you got the vocals, you got the, it's, it's it's all in the same category when you record a song. So I saw you perform like in the middle of Times Square, mm -hmm. like for New York Fashion Week. Yeah. How did that feel? Like, what, what was the crowd's reaction? I mean, Yo, that's like big shit that's right huge. there. That's huge, that's <laughs> huge. No, know? that was that was one of the best days ever. Like, I, I actually had a different show that morning, which was crazy. And it was kind of a smaller show. It was, um, it was, it was, it was indoor and it was kind of quiet. And then I left and went immediately to Times Square and did the Times Square show. And it, it, it felt like I was living a dream, you know? It was very outer body. Yeah. It was a very outer body experience. It didn't, it didn't really feel real, you know? But yeah, definitely one of my favorite shows ever and probably always will be. I mean, I'm in front of 10,000 people in the yeah. heart of Times Square. I'm like, the red stairs are right there. I'm like, I'm like, it Mama, we me. made it. No, I'm just kidding. That's it, how. It, it was like giving. Uh, MTV, like Carson Daly yeah, vibes, yeah. you know what I'm it's saying? It's like the Today Show. Yeah, like, I was like, wow. Like, yeah, that, that was, was fire. That was big. That was amazing. And, and also, it was great, too, because what a litmus test for who my demographic is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Times Square, you have every age, every culture, every race, every everything you can imagine mm -hmm. as far as the demographic goes. And it was nothing but love and applause and cheers, like, you know? So, so what a great way to test out a song or two, you know? It's yeah. like... Facts. If anybody's gonna chew you up and spit you out, it's all of New Times York Square. City. Yeah. New York City, like, <laughs> I mean, there's there, there's kids there, there's grandmas there, you know, probably like a hundred languages being spoken, and they all loved it. So. And other performers, right? Well, so. it was really, um, there was only one other performer, it was a little girl. Mm -hmm. She was dope. She was dope. She, <laughs> she, she's kind of like, yeah, no, she was, she was dope. She, um, there was, there was a little girl, and the rest of it was all uh, fashion week. Mm -hmm. So models and stuff. It, yeah, it was just models. Different collections. Just different collections, and then I pop up. 
do my song Gumball, and you know I, I peaced out. So that was that was an amazing day. I, I when, when I left, I was on Cloud Nine. I'm still on Cloud Nine from that show. Hell yeah! I mean, it was dope, man. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite songs uh, by you is Translucent. Really? I mean, it's I love fire. That. It's catchy. I love that. You know, um, even the video, like the Kill Bill yeah. vibes in the video. Yeah. Like, who thought of that? Yeah, I mean, that was really me and my manager. Um, I don't know. It kind of, it kind of just made sense. It, it, like, you know, she's, she's, you know, um, Uma Thurman. She's in another world, you know, and mm -hmm. and she just encompasses it. And it kind of was how I was feeling. I was this girl in the rap game, and I kind of felt like I was an underdog. Like I was kind of an outsider, but you know, I, I fought my way through. And yeah, I, I really, I really, I love making that video. That was that was actually a lot of fun. I shot that in <laughs> Chicago. Okay. And a lot of it's obviously green screen, but there also is one of the main scenes. It actually was along the lake in Chicago, Lake Michigan, and it looks very like looks like I'm in China or something. It's very oriental. It really fit the theme, and I'm, it was it was amazing. Yeah. Yo, that's dope. Make sure y'all go stream Gumball. So on all streaming platforms right now. Make sure y'all go follow Luna Gray. Where can they find you at? You can follow me everywhere at the Luna Gray. That is T H E. L-U-N-A-G-R-E-Y. Yo, you already know what it is. It's your boy, Johnny Fastlane. You got anything else coming up? Um, I, I do, and it's all kind of under wraps right now. But okay. lots of great things to come. Check me out on social media. Stay in tune with me. You can Google me, Luna Gray, everywhere, all streaming platforms. Love you guys. Peace.